Word of God. So um, we're going to welcome John. John, come on up and uh, Thank you. give him a round of applause. Amen. I'll let you share whatever you want to in terms of your background. But um, John, I do want to say this, just to give mm -hmm. you a foundation. John is um, a U.S. citizen. However, recently from political standpoint, <clears throat> India has um, done a revoking of dual citizenship. So now he is placed in a unique situation and um, seeking <clears throat> God about whether the Lord's leading him into America as possible missionary to America um, and how that integrates then with the work there. So um, he's in an interesting season in his life. Right. And um, so you can take and run with that however you'd like. But uh, sure. three children just dropped one off in college. And so lots going on here, but we're honored to have you here. It's an honor to be here, Pastor. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> hey, good morning, everyone. Morning. It's good to be here, and it uh, seems like family, <laughs> even though I haven't met most of you, just uh, worshiping the Lord together. And uh, <clears throat> it's amazing how in Christ, <clears throat> you know, we share a unique bond yes. as family. Amen. Um, <clears throat> yeah, as Pastor was saying, Married. My wife's name is Roja, uh, which means Rose, uh, and uh, she's an Indian citizen, by the way. And so we're working that out. If ever we make the move to come over here <coughs> to get her here, we're working that out. Two of my daughters, they're U.S. citizens, including myself, and my son is an Indian citizen. So we are half Indian, half American. <laughs> if you want to call us American Indian, we're fine with <laughs> that. <laughs> <clears throat> so, uh, anyways, uh, with that, I think we'll dive right into the Word, and uh, I know you guys are eager <clears throat> to hear from what the Lord has <clears throat> put in my heart, and I really believe I have a word for you today. Amen. So why don't we just close our eyes and look to the Lord. Father, <clears throat> give us the spirit of wisdom <clears throat> and revelation in the knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ that the eyes of our understanding might be open, <clears throat> that today we will not just hear, but we will experience your heart, Lord. And I thank you for each person here. You know where they are in their lives, whatever situation, circumstances they are facing. God, I ask that your Holy Spirit will minister to each one of them at the point of their need not just minister to them, Lord, but show them all the goodness and the mercy and the kindness of the Lord. Let it be revealed to us, Lord. Let it be revealed to us through the person of Jesus Christ. Father, let your rivers of love flow in this place. Let your rivers of healing flow in this place. Let your life flow in this place, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity to be with the family of God. Amen. And thank you, Lord, as we sang that one day every tribe, from every tribe, people will praise you and worship you. And we're getting there, Lord. Thank you for the wonderful privilege you have given us to represent Christ to this world, to represent Christ to the different people groups that don't know you. <clears throat> Lord, speak to us, speak to me, speak through me to each one of us here. <clears throat> In Jesus' name we pray. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Let's go on to Ephesians chapter 3. <clears throat> I'd like to talk from Ephesians chapter 3 a little bit and then um, we'll go on to in detail on one of the verses <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 3 <clears throat> verses 17 onwards actually if I should say it's from verse 14 but we're going to be looking from verse 17 onwards <clears throat> um, Paul is actually writing his um, prayer one of his prayers to the Ephesian church <clears throat> he'd already shared one of his prayers earlier in Ephesians chapter 1 so now in Ephesians chapter 3, he's writing another one of his prayers. And then in verse um, 17, 
the second part of verse 17, um, he says that you be rooted and grounded in love. If you're wondering what version I'm using, it's the King James Version. It's the only anointed version. And that's a joke, by the way. <laughs> anyway, so uh, he, he prays that the church be rooted and grounded in God's love. Everybody say rooted and grounded. I don't know what that version says over there. <laughs> Oh, you got the KJV there? <laughs> okay, you, you mean you can use other versions. I was just joking about it. <laughs> so I think, I mean, looking in that verse, I think this prayer, I think it's very crucial for our times, especially because of the storms we've fa been facing around us. Uh, about five or six years back, we had this particular storm, you know, come through our city and many of the huge trees were uprooted. We had thousands of trees that were uprooted because of the storm and then it, there were, you know, medium-sized trees or tiny trees, you know, that stood their ground. And the simple reason for that was their roots had gone in deep inside the ground. And I think God wants this church to have a greater revelation of his love because that's what is so important to the times we are living in where everything that must be shaken is being shaken amen <clears throat> so God wants our roots to grow deep deep in his love and then in verse 18 he goes on to say that together with all the saints Everybody say, together with all the saints. That you may be able to comprehend the height, the depth, the length and the width of God's love for you. And I believe as big as God is, as eternal as He is, that's how big His love is for each one of us. Amen? And I think each one of us have experienced God's love differently, uniquely. Some of us have experienced His love in the depths of our life, in the deepest points of our life. Some of us have experienced Him on the highest mountains. And as we come together collectively and we share our testimonies, of the way God reached us, of His love that reached us, when we come to a collective understanding of the height, the length, and the depth, and the width of God's love. Amen? And so Paul is praying that prayer for the Ephesian church, and I believe it's a prayer that we can pray for our own selves, we can pray for the church, we can pray for our children. Amen? And then he goes on to say, verse 19, to know the love of Christ, everybody say the love of Christ, that goes beyond understanding. When God starts to reveal his love to you, especially the love of Christ, in Jesus coming to this earth, and many times we know it here, but the moment we start to see it here and start to, you know, start comprehending the extent of the love that Christ had for us in coming down to this earth and we start to think about it, there comes a time where it goes beyond our understanding. Like, no, I can't even think about it. And so Paul is praying that the church understands God's love and one of the reasons for that is he goes on to say that you may be filled, everybody say filled, filled. with the fullness, everybody say fullness, fullness, of God. Of God. It's in the Bible. <laughs> I'm not just quoting something here. Amen. You better check that out. Is it there? 
How many of us want the fullness of God in our lives? Think about the great I am, right? The one who's put the stars in place by his fingers. One who spoke everything into existence by his word. One who measured the oceans in the palm of his hand. Think about that great God and that great God coming to dwell among us in fullness. How would that be? I know we've been praying for revival. We've been praying for visitations. We've been praying for America. I've been doing that my tiny part. <laughs> Even though most of my work is in India. Could it be the revival, the way to revival is when as a body we start comprehending the height, the breadth and the length and the depth of God's love. The love of Christ that surpasseth all understanding and we just start loving one another just as Jesus said we should. And a lot of times, yes, we are wanting the presence of God. We are wanting more of God. But I think an easier way, a simpler way is just experiencing God in His love and then just simply loving one another. And I believe that's something that God wants to do at this moment of time in the United States in the church. Probably there's a lot of divisions. There's a lot of herds. There's so much de on deep inside and we know what is right we need we know we need to forgive we know we need to walk in love but we're not able to do that because we can't do that out of our own selves dearly beloved the only way we can do that is when we experience the selfless love of God the love of God that fills our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. When the Spirit of God opens the eyes of our understanding to see Christ. Christ crucified the love of Christ. The love of God. The heights and the depths and the breadths of the love of God. And then we are filled with that love and then we are able to forgive. We are able to release people that have been you know, mean to us or spoken against us. So I'm going to be sharing on the love of God again in the second service also, but different thoughts. So I would encourage you to, you know, watch online even after this service. So today I want to talk about the heights and the depths, the length and the breadth of God's love for you and me. Amen. I've written this down. His love goes to any extent to reach that one individual in need. You know, when Hagar was running away from Sarah, from Abraham, she was pregnant with Ishmael. And Sarah was abusive to her. Here's this servant girl who doesn't have anybody to stand up for her, who doesn't have anybody to speak up for her. She doesn't know what to do and the only thing she knows is to run away from home. And she's running away, she's weeping, She's crying. Do you know what? The angel of the Lord encounters her there. Right. And do you, know, do you know what Hagar says? You are a God that saves me. Dearly beloved, I want to tell you that God loves 
each and every individual each and every individual personally and he goes to any extent to reach that individual his love for you and me is personal as big as god is as big and you know huge the galaxy and everything that he holds together by his great power his love is personal right. he loves you wherever you are he loves you and today i believe the love of god is coming to you today this is an opportunity for you today to experience that love wherever you are i remember the time i'm not going to name the place uh, i hope you'd understand there was this state that we had gone in and um, <clears throat> we had had these meetings for nearly two weeks when we're talking about meetings especially in areas uh, that are remote it requires a lot of travel you travel a lot and with that you know you're ministering also and when people come for you for prayer and there's long lines so you're ministering like three times or two times a day so and you've been ministering now for two weeks so at the end of two weeks I'm pretty exhausted so sometimes you know <laughs> um, your body doesn't know where it is that's how it is so there was this meeting that was arranged in a remote village and along with that meeting we had to meet a couple of people and in that place where that meeting was arranged so we had a small van um, kind of like Tony's you know <laughs> <laughs> Tony, God will bless you with a new van. Amen. Amen. Say amen, brother. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry I had to say that. Uh, yeah, so it was giving us trouble all the way. And so, <clears throat> by the 13th day when we were traveling to that remote, remote village, the tire got punctured <clears throat> and we didn't have a spare. I mean, we after putting on the new tire we didn't have a spare so you guys understand that right <clears throat> so as we are traveling to this place and it is <clears throat> pretty much in the jungles um, I we hear that the meeting has been canceled <clears throat> because of uh, some issues with the people who are against the meeting <clears throat> and uh, they were planning to create some problems you know coming there <clears throat> So we had a choice <clears throat> to either go and meet that one family or that two families that are there or you know just head straight off to the airport you know spend a night there and catch the flight <clears throat> but you know what happened something in me wouldn't want to go to the airport something in me was like I need to go and meet that family and everybody was against that idea <laughs> and I was hoping that the tire wouldn't get punctured <laughs> because if it did we were caught in the middle of nowhere and probably would miss our flight so I was praying God <laughs> if ever something happens to that tire everybody's going to turn on me <laughs> <clears throat> but as I was praying I felt Jesus so happy yeah. I, I felt the pleasure of the Lord yeah. he said son this is what it is about I know I'm not against ministry to the thousands, it's great. But then, you know, Jesus, after ministering to thousands of people, he went to that one person 
was roaming in the jungles. He was not on his right mind. He was rejected by society. Jesus crossed the sea, crossed the ocean for that single person. And dearly beloved, that's how God's love is towards you and me. And if you're in a place where you're feeling lonely or left out, if you're in a place of rejection, I want to tell you, Jesus loves you. And His love is here this morning. Amen. The second point I'd like to make on the heights and the breadth of God's love is this. His love touches those in society, those that society, those that so society says that should not be touched. Let's go to Matthew chapter 8. And I'm just going to go through it pretty fast here. Um, Matthew chapter 8. You know, verse 1 says, Large crowds were following Jesus. I want you to have that in mind. Verse 2 says, Suddenly, in some, some versions, you know, have behold and lo. Um, other versions have suddenly a leper came. And then, you know, if you want to capture the whole picture of what, is, what was going on, sometimes, you know, one of the Gospels has a part, but then you look into the other Gospels and you bring everything together, you get the whole picture, right? And that's what Mark does. Mark says in Mark 1, I believe, 41, Jesus had compassion on him. Matthew doesn't say that, but Mark says Jesus had compassion on him and touched him, right? So I'm just going to build on that a little bit for us to understand the extent to which Jesus showed his love. And some of it might, might be my own opinion, right? But in Jewish culture, if you get leprosy, that means you have sinned, right? That was the mindset that was there in that religious society. See, Miriam, you know, when she rebelled, you know, she became leprous. King Uzziah, you know, because of his pride, he became leprous. So there are instances like that. And Gaiasi, the servant of Elisha, you know, he, he becomes leprous. So it wasn't Jewish, ingrained in Jewish mindset in those days that if you get leprosy, that means you are a sinner. You have done something wrong. And in those days, there was no cure for leprosy, so that was, there was also fear attached to, you know, people with their religious beliefs. And so when you had leprosy, not only were you told that you are a sinner, you were also cast out of the society. Lepers couldn't live with the rest. You know, they lived in a separate colony by themselves. And you could just imagine the turmoil this person would have undergone in his life. Because the reason for me saying that is he comes to Jesus and says, Lord, if you're willing. And what I perceive from that is, he would have been told that he was a sinner. You've done something wrong. You're outcast. You can't be a part of us. And so, he would have had this mind, you know, there's something wrong that was done, either him or his parents. And he didn't have a proper understanding of God. <clears throat> At some point in his life, you know, he would have heard that there's this man, Jesus, who heals Hey, he gave sight to a blind man. Then hope would have risen in this leper. If Jesus can give slight sight to a blind man, he could cleanse me of my leprosy. 
But the million dollar question was, would God heal me a sinner? You know, he had been rejected by society. He had been told that God rejected him. That's what he had been told. So even though he heard that Jesus heals and all of that, there was this turmoil in him. Would God actually heal me? And in those days, if you had leprosy and you came to town, you were stoned, you were killed. You got to come to town crying, unclean, unclean, unclean. Can you imagine somebody coming to town, you know, and they're declaring over themselves, I'm unclean, I'm unclean. How bad is that for morals? How bad is that for that person? He wouldn't have had any self-esteem whatsoever. But then here's this person who's undergoing this struggle. He's undergoing this emotional turmoil. And he's thinking to himself, if I try to go in, I might get stoned. But let's say I go to Jesus and what if I'm rejected by Jesus? Because, you know, what was put into him was, you are a sinner, God has rejected you. You want to come, Tony? <laughs> Tony's going to be the leper. <laughs> So, <laughs> please don't call him that after the meeting. <laughs> I think Bean can, right? <laughs> so, as Jesus is walking with a huge crowd, it was a huge crowd. Imagine what it must have taken him to get to that place to meet Jesus. He runs to Jesus. And he falls at his feet. Come on, Tony. <laughs> and you want to say what he said? Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. See, he didn't even know if God was willing. He knew that God was able. But he didn't know that if Jesus was willing. And you know what? The word captured it so beautifully. Jesus had compassion on him. You know what compassion is? It's feeling the other person's turmoil as if it's your own. It's feeling the other person's pain as your own. And Jesus did something that nobody in that society ever did. Jesus had compassion on him and touched him. <laughs> ever since he had leprosy, everybody was like, no, get off, unclean, stay away. And here's this person, because of that, a lot of emotional turmoil. And when Jesus reached out and touched him, he was healing his emotional pain. He was setting right his emotional struggles. And he looked at him and he said, I am willing. I am willing. Be thou made whole. Can we just clap to the Lord in that moment? Tony can go. <laughs> Dearly beloved, ow. <laughs> Jesus is willing. And I think as a church, as a community, 
we have to be willing to touch those people. <laughs> The society says, on, in quotes, the religious society says, you know, they're outcast, they're sinners, don't go there. God wants us to be an extension of who Jesus was. There's a society out there that's been told that God will, God has rejected them or, you know, whatever. And there's a lot of turmoil in them and God wants us to be His hands in reaching out. And we have time just for one more. <laughs> I know I've written it um, this way, but... Um, he can write the third point down, his love forgives. I know we've heard about that a lot. Um, but you know, from the story of the prodigal son, can I just have you over playing? I believe it's in Luke 15, 11 to 32. You can just go and look at it. I was just want to give you a background to the story. Tony's going to play that part also. Tony, can you just go back? <laughs> okay. So in the Jewish society, when a son decides to take half of his, you know, whatever belongs to him, leave his father halfway, that's like, you know, the boy spitting on the father's face. And I believe his father would have been a reputed person. And for the son to just spit on the father's face and just to leave, imagine the humiliation in society he would have faced. So many people would have talked about, you know, how he raised his child. So many people would have gossiped about it. And here's this young man who goes away from the father. He wastes everything. He lives righteously. And then because of his disobedience and because of his actions, he's now left in a place where he doesn't have anything to eat. He's eating pig's food to satisfy his hunger. And in that place, he realizes he's made a mistake. He thinks to himself, Oh, my father had many servants. And even the servants had abundance of food. I don't know if my father will accept me if I go back. I'm not worthy to be his son because of all the things I've done. I'm going to go back to him and say, Father, Please forgive me, accept me as your servant. That was the mindset of the son. But do you know the mindset of the father? The mindset of the father was, Where is my son? Where is my son? When will my son come back? When will my son come back? And I believe he was waiting every day, waiting every day, thinking, when will his son come back? And there was this one day, the father is waiting. Tony, can we do it from there? <laughs> and here's the son. Just slowly, Tony, yeah, stay there for now. <laughs> just looking hey it seems like my son I think it is I think you know what he does he runs up to him he runs up and he just grabs my son
himself by saying, Dad, I've sinned against you. But he doesn't let him get to the point of servant. You wouldn't find it there. Before he gets to that place, he says, My son was lost. Now he's found. Come on, kill the fatted calf for him. My ring. This is my ring, my son. And you know what? That's how the God, God the Father loves each one of us. Regardless of where we are, regardless of what you've done, the Father's heart is, when will my children come back? When will my daughter my son come back I'd like to finish with this story and just pray there was this father who had only son and the son was pretty wavered but the father wanted it the best for his boy and I know in American culture it's a little different. <laughs> you get kicked out after you're 16. <laughs> that's fine, that's perfectly fine. But the father works for his son, helps his son to get into college, then makes him a man. And the son goes abroad because of the sacrifices of his father and he forgets what his father has done now because of the sacrifices his dad now is in a very difficult situation i believe this is a true story that happened after many years the son realizes that he's made a mistake but that he doesn't know if the father is in a place to receive him. They didn't have cell phones those times or phones. So he writes a letter. Dad, I want to come back to you and set things right. But I don't know if you're willing to accept me. Even if you don't, it's fine because I know I've made a lot of mistakes in life. But here's the thing, Dad. I would be passing by train. Train, train, you understand what train is? So it's not an Indian word, right? Okay. And there's this tree that is close by to our house. I want you to put a white flag there on that tree. If I see the white flag, I'll stop in the next stop and then come home. But if I don't see the white flag, that's fine, Dad. I'll just leave and things will be fine. You know, his heart doesn't know if his father would accept him or not. So as he's getting close, he's getting really nervous. And as he comes close, passing by that train, he doesn't see one white flag. The tree is filled with white flags. You know what his father thought? If I put one white flag, maybe my son might miss it. So he put white flags all over the tree. Dearly beloved, when you look at what happened on the cross, Jesus spread out his arms and died. That was God telling mankind, I love you so much. I love each one of you so much. Come to me. 
there was this one time, you know, I was going in in the car in, to to a remote area, and it seemed like it seemed like the cross appeared in the sky. You know, Jesus hanging on the cross. It was almost like from the earth to the heaven. I I, can't, I couldn't comprehend it. And God was like, Son, people don't see how much I love them, Son. People don't see how much I love them. Help them to see, Son. Help them to see I've done everything for them. Help them to see I left everything to come to this earth just for them. Today, wherever you might be, in whatever circumstance you might be, whatever situation you might be, the love of God is flowing like a river in this place. Today, we live in a society that is so self-centered and selfish. And the only thing that can change us is the selfless love of the Father. It's the selfless love of God. That's the only thing that can change us. That's the only thing that can bring together as a community. So Father, I ask tonight, today, Wherever we are, Lord. Lord, the heights and the depths of your love. Your river of love that's flowing in this place, God. That is ministering to each person. Father, that you will open our hearts more to your love, to see your love. To see the love of your son, Jesus. Open our hearts, Lord. Dearly beloved, that's a lot of times we judge, judge people by their actions. And not saying we, we shouldn't bring correction. And a lot of times people are the way they are because of the trauma they faced in their lives. People are doing the things they do because they've been rejected, they've been abused. There was nobody to love them and therefore they are the way they are. And if we're going to reach out to them, we can't do it by ourselves. We need that love from God to press past everything. Because when we start loving them, we would come up with resistance and with everything that they have faced in their lives. But if we are persistent in loving them with the love of God, we can win them over. There's no valley that the love of God can't reach. There's no mountain too high for the love of God. Probably you are right here in a place and you think you're far away from God. Maybe you think you've gone away from God. Maybe your heart has grown cold to God. Firstly, I'd like to minister to you. Wherever you are, if you're in that place and you know that you need to come back to God, why don't you just raise your hands wherever you are? I'd like to pray for you. If you're in that place, when every eye closed, let's just focus on the Lord. Or if you need healing, if you need more of the love of God, and I think every one of us needs that, why don't we just raise our hands to the Lord? Jesus, Jesus, Lord, your love is abundant in this place. 
Some of you have faced so much of rejection in your life. God wants to heal that rejection. You have the Spirit of God in your heart, crying, Abba, Father. The first thing that God does in us, once we give our heart to Him, is to say, you have been accepted. You are my daughter. You are my son. And Lord, for everyone, we need you, love. Everybody that's raised their hands, including myself. God, I need you. I need your love. Every one of us here need your love. Lord, I pray that your love will meet them wherever they are. Whatever points there are in their lives, if there's hurts that are there, Lord, I pray for the river of love to flow through those wounds, bring healing, bring cleansing, bring deliverance. God, I see a lot of wounds. I see hurts in the Spirit, and the Spirit of God is just, just wanting to minister there. If people have heard you, I think this is a good time to forgive them. And as you forgive, this river of love that's flowing will flow into those wounds, bringing healing and bringing life. Lord, healing, Lord. Healing to every, every emotional wound and trauma. And even those watching, Lord, let your rivers of love flow through the airways, bringing healing and life and restoration, God, in the name of Jesus. Come on, guys, just, just reach out to Him. Just a few more moments, just reach out to Him. Reach out to Him, reach out. Tony, Tony had a word earlier. He, he shared it with me. And the word was, as God is healing emotional wounds, I believe physical infirmities are going to leave bodies. Amen. We believe that. As God is bringing healing on the inside, pains and allergies will leave in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke we rebuke the spirit of infirmity in the name of Jesus we command that you take your hands of God's people in the name of Jesus yes. dearly beloved there's one thing I would like to do before I hand it over to the dear pastor why don't you think of somebody that needs God's love might be even in your own family your children or somebody you know that's struggling right now in their lives can we just pray as a body that this love that's here come on man Let's pray. Rescue every day. 
God to everyone that's broken. You're a God that makes all things new. God, reach into the depths of the brokenness. Bring healing, God. Bring restoration, God. Father, the roots of bitterness and anger God, just uprooted by the roots and fill those areas with your love. The walls that have been built. You're a God that broke the greatest wall ever between the Jew and the Gentile. God, let your rivers of love break through every wall, Lord. Break through every barrier, God. Bring families together. Bring husband and wives together. Bring children and parents together. Bring us together as a community, God. Bring us together as a body, God. Bring us together, breaking all barriers and denominational lines. Bring us together, God. Oh, God, pour out your spirit on us, oh, God. Oh God, pour your spirit upon us, oh God. Revive us, oh God. Let your bride arise. Let your body arise. In all glory, God. In all glory, God. Jesus. Jesus. To bow down. For every heart to believe, for every voice to cry out, burn like a fire in me, for every tongue to confess that you alone are the King, you are the hope of the earth. You alone are the 